Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is a video on the contents of my uh, little hunting kit for the purposes of survival. So not a survival kit that you take hunting, but a kit that has contents in it for procuring food in a survival situation, or at least some items that I would carry, okay? Now, uh, let's talk about environment just briefly. I'm not in a coastal region. I'm 10,000 feet above sea level, and I'm in a very uh, arid environment, very dry, and so I'm going to lean heavy on traps. While I still have water sources, I'm still going to attempt to fish. Fish is always first because I need to be down the, to those water sources anyway in a survival situ situation. But this kit is going to lean heavy on traps as well as small uh, ways to uh, use projectiles. Okay, so I have a couple of ways in here for projectiles and then snares and traps and for fishing. But let's take a look inside the kit for my environment. Now I've got this little MSR stove, pop it open. I'm gonna get rid of the tin lid, right, or the lid real quick. And first thing you guys see, I'm gonna have a slingshot. Uh, rubber with the leather pocket. All right, this is just one of those uh, spare rubbers that you guys can get from uh, you know any tractor supply store or whatever it is, a little hunting store. And so I usually carry one or two of those for the purposes of making an improvised uh, slingshot for shooting a uh, small game. I had uh, an opportunity to use one when I was in uh, Louisiana last month for about a month in the field, and very accurate, took a couple of small lizards and stuff, but uh, very doable for uh, game, especially a smaller game like ground squirrels and rabbits and uh, things of that nature. Um, next, I've got, man, all these, uh, all these little worms are on me today. Um, you guys just want to be bait. Um, next, I have a one and a half ounce package of peanut butter for the purposes of bait and its emergency food supply uh, in the event I need to eat it for my own purposes, okay? Uh, next I have 550 cord. 550 cord. What can't you do with 550 cord from traps to triggers to snares uh, to construction of improvised weapons? You can take 550 cord and actually can, uh, construct a makeshift sling like a David and Goliath sling um, and use that as an improvised weapon. You just got to be really good with it obviously. Not a, not a, a go-to unless you've got some practice with it. Next, I've got bank line for the same purposes as construction with traps, snares, and triggers, and especially water traps or snares that I put out for fish. Uh, I'm going to use that for uh, uh, water uh, procurement, water food procurement uh, for fish. But I can also use it for snares and then more construction cordage is always a, uh, a plus. Next, I have Tin foil, this is about 12 inches by 48 inches of tin foil. Tin foil is very multi purpose, signaling a device. Uh, you can use it to leave a track uh, for search and rescue, but in this case, I'm going to use it for improvised lures, maybe, and then for cooking. Okay, a video to come shortly that I want to do for you guys is how to cook game to get the most out of it that you can, or at least the way that I was taught to get the most out of it you can for uh, two to three, maybe even four meals worth of food. Okay. But that'll be later. But I'll have tin foil for that. Next, as part of my mindset, I was thinking about things that are multifunctional, but uh, maybe everyday items. And a couple of those were wine corks. Now, with wine corks, uh, you can cut these off to make bobbers. You can cut them off to make uh, stops and improvised canteens. You can use these for uh, with needles that you magnetize for improvised compasses. But then I can obviously use these as well for uh, burning in a fire getting the end charred and then using that char as makeshift camouflage, okay? Always big on camouflage, but wine corks are very multifunctional, just wrapped off, uh, you know, four different purposes right there. Uh, to go along with that, I have fishing line. This is the easiest way I've seen or the easiest way that I've found to wrap fishing line when you want to take it off that giant spool. And this is uh, maybe 20, 30, 40 feet of uh, 10 pound test. And it's just a green that I've wrapped in around cardboard with 100 mile an hour tape on to kind of keep it a little bit sturdy. And then I use that tape to secure the end that you guys can see right here. And uh, this is so I can pull off the uh, fishing line as much as I need, cut it off, and then secure the rest while I go to work with what I have uh, right there. That's the easiest way for me. Plus, I can fit that in a small container. Next, I have a series of, or a couple different uh, 
pieces of wire. Now the spool right here is just picture wire or picture hanging wire that I've cut down into small sections about 14 inches each for the purposes of just quick deploying snares. And then I have this right here, the spool that I've acquired off of a, a, a early detection uh, kit for um, uh, perimeter security and so this is just trip wire it's just army trip wire that uh, is roughly the same gauge as that you know 24 gauge or whatever it is and you can use this it's the same stuff we use for trip wires like patrol bases or canalization points to uh, send off pyrotechnics for early alert or a booby trap like a grenade to uh, disrupt and destroy enemy movement okay but I have that next I have a series of nails all right, just a bunch of nails right here. Nails are good for improvised frog gigs and just affixing this stuff. I can use some of the tape I have in here to uh, quickly lash this to a stick while I use the bank line or the cordage to affix it to a stick for the purpose of creating a spear or a gig. All right, and then a couple more nails right there. I can obviously, or I can also use the nails for um, the deadfall as well for traps to just increase the likelihood of a kill with a trap using that or to trap an animal in the event that animal is bigger than expected for the trap and that nail just kind of holds it in place long enough for me to get there and dispatch it. Next I have a nail with some 100 mile an hour tape wrapped around. What can't you do with 100 mile an hour tape? It's the best survival tool in the world. Uh, next I have several sachets or improvised sachets, I should say, uh, that I've taken and I've used 100 mile an hour tape to create these. And if I show you briefly, they have little tabs on them that I've created just by folding over so I can get to them relatively quickly. And if I pull them apart, I can get to the contents inside while I kick the lid here. And this is just a razor. I have a couple of razors in this one. I have safety pins in this one, safety pins for basic gear repair and construction improvised hooks, things of that nature. And then I have uh, one filled with hooks. All right, as you guys can see, there are some swivels in there and then a couple of sinkers uh, at the bottom of that so I can grab them relatively quickly and use them for fishing. But this is kind of how I rolled with my uh, food procurement kit in Sears School. This is the easiest way, just coming, coming up with it on the fly, to put it in my pocket, have it so it's not going to hurt me, but then I can get to it relatively easy, get what I need out of it, attach it with my fishing line like this, and then this is just my fishing kit basically uh, when I was in Sear. All right, so just a, a, way for, a way for you guys to do that in the future if you so, uh, if you so desire. Next, I just have an example of a improvised fishing lure. You got the hook with the uh, 550 cord end that I didn't burn off that I kept. And this is just a basic uh, improvised fishing lure, something that you can do with uh, 550 cord. Next I have, I'm not going to pull them all out, but I have about 15 small treble hooks. All right. So I have these treble hooks for a couple of purposes. One, obviously fishing is uh, you can still fish around here. Treble hooks, the small ones, go for small hooks, don't go for large hooks. Small hooks catch big fish and small fish. Large hooks only catch large fish. And so with the treble hooks, I can still catch the small fish, but I can use these as well for traps. With that peanut butter, I can coat that treble hook and don't use this unless it's in a survival scenario, clearly. Um, and then I could put it uh, hang it from a tree or hang it from a stake, hang it from an anchor point, and along a route, maybe where rabbits are or maybe other smaller animals, and they bite on that uh, peanut butter, and then eventually the hook gets caught, and they're caught just like a fish, okay? Uh, but I can use that for a trap, but I use the uh, treble hooks for fishing as well, if I'm going to set up uh, maybe a, an improvised trout line uh, in the water, some sort of concealed fishing trap in the water. Uh, while I'm evading in an evading in a evasion area, okay? And then lastly, I have a series of zip ties. Zip ties are great for that hasty construction, that hasty construction of all the materials uh, for the for traps, triggers, snares, for fishing line, for our slingshot. Uh, we can, uh, we can attach that very quickly and in a video coming up I'll show you how to do that or a very easy way to do that. It should be self-explanatory. 
uh, almost, but zip ties are going to be a great way to construct materials very, very quickly. Okay. Well, guys, you've seen it. This is my kit. Let me pack it up really quick. All right. So just kind of go in reverse order here as I had everything set up. And this all packs up very quickly, um, you know, if I don't drop it first. And then all the, <laughs> all the inch worms that are rolling around here. Throw my, throw my nails in, throw all that stuff in. And then I'll put the tin foil, or here I'll put my fishing line, tin foil, grab my string. Okay, put that in there. I'm gonna put my peanut butter in there as kind of a protectant for my slingshot because I don't want one of those hooks coming loose and kind of damaging the rubber. Flip this bad boy over, and then that's it for a survival kit for the purposes of procuring food or items you should think about carrying for procuring food with a couple of tips and different intents and purposes for those items based on my experience and some of the things that I've come up with over the years. Anyway guys, uh, a down and dirty video on items for an improvised hunting kit for survival and how to procure, or at least some items in there with ideas on how to procure food. In future videos, I wanna go over how to set up some of these traps, how to set up some of these uh, fishing uh, traps, or how to go fishing, set up different snares and triggers, put slingshots together for the purposes of hunting food, and then eventually get to how we cook that food uh, to sustain us for as long as possible. Okay, but I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. Uh, once again, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. All right, leave a comment. Let me know how the microphone is working out. Another new video with a new mic. Okay, I want to know how the audio sounds for you guys. Anyway, I appreciate everything you do for me, guys. I will be back with another video just as soon as I can. Thanks.